I would like to begin with a quote from Arthur Kornberg's seminal book on inorganic phosphates, in which he postulated polyphosphates, polyphonic, polyphosphates, what, you know, whatever. We're just musicians, you know. This is indeed a great, great day for our graduates. You're surrounded by family and friends and faculty and staff, students with whom you've shared concerts and classes, toiled over German sixth chords, um, talked about food, transportation, the plight of the human race, uh, and now it's time to chart your own course. The moment's a little bittersweet and maybe even daunting, I will submit, but transitions by and large are very healthy and very exciting, and they're signs of real growth and real emergence. I believe you're graduating at one of the most remarkable times in music history. You know, we talk a lot about music's uncertainty, about the shifting sands of classical music and where is it going. But this very uncertainty may in fact be your greatest opportunity. Your charge will be to take your impeccable standards of, and accomplishments in artistry and scholarship, your gathered knowledge and your experience, and then combine all of that with the blessing of youthful exuberance so you can radically jolt music into its next great epic. You are, after all, Eastman. As you leave us today, you will be called upon to exhibit a great spirit of aesthetic adventure and at least two qualities, I think, that this new age requires of its leaders, and indeed you are music's leaders. First, your ability and your willingness to be collaborative. I'm not talking about your ability to get along and make great music with others in a symphony orchestra or a string quartet or a choral setting. I'm talking about the kind of collaboration that is extra musical collaboration. For your music will not only be inspired by, but will flourish and grow in the garden of real world experiences. Real world social and political upheaval of human paradoxes, dramas, and joys. Your music, our music, will be strong and vibrant because it is performing on that theatrical stage, collaborating and regenerating itself in order to reform its own unique identity. This issue of collaboration might not be such a big deal were it not for the way that we become musicians, because in many respects, learning music is a solitary profession, at least in its preparation and its working out. It's a profession of sometimes excruciating solitary confinement, be it the quiet and the solitude that the scholar seeks in order to read and think and write, or the violinist or the pianist or the composer that hones their craft during thousands and thousands of hours of solitary sweat and toil. Living in this new collaborative world has at its core one very simple impulse, generosity. This is a tricky and somewhat complicated issue because we are, after all, a very attention-seeking profession. I don't think that we're necessarily unusual in that regard. I asked an educational psychologist once this pesky question. I said, so give me your take on the human dilemma. And his reply, this was a gentleman who dealt with parents and students, children, artists, educators. He said the human drama, he didn't say the human dilemma, he corrected me. He said the human drama is really quite simple. It's about attention about the getting and the giving. Twyla Tharp, one of America's most notable choreographers, wrote in a chapter in her book, The Creative Habit, about how we artists and scholars and teachers and composers want to be lucky so that the good breaks can come our way, so that our work can get attention. Twyla Tharp said, quote, if you want to be lucky, be generous. She went on to say, I don't use that word lightly. Generosity is luck going in the opposite direction, away from you. If you're generous to someone, if you do something to help him out, you are in effect making him or her lucky. This is important. It's like inviting yourself into the house of good fortune. 
Whenever I feel I'm working in a groove, it's invariably because I feel I am being the benefactor in the situation rather than the beneficiary." End quote. But more importantly, this spirit of collaboration will be central to the survival and splendor of music's next great era. As music tumbles about in the combustion chamber of the real world, the robust theater of ideas, not just musical ideas inspired by somebody else's musical ideas, but that mosh pit of literature and visual art and drama, of the mosh pit of the human condition, the human condition with which you must and will engage. Trust me, that world needs you. More specifically, this notion of vigorously connecting your music with other art forms is not, frankly, a new idea. Stravinsky's association with the great choreographer Diaghilev brought us Petrushka, Firebird, and Le Sacre du Ponton. He collaborated with Picasso, and that yielded Pulcinella. With the French poet Jean Cocteau, he produced Oedipus Rex. With the novelist André Gade, Persephone. With the poet W.H. Auden, The Rake's Progress. For George Balanchine, Stravinsky wrote more than a dozen ballets. Dance gave Stravinsky a forum, gave his choreographers in the dance world some extraordinary music for dance, and created a whole network of contacts that brought his music to life. Not to mention, of course, the fact that he gave us so much brilliant music that we appreciate completely on its own. Music is theater in the broadest sense of the term. Now, to be sure, walking into that minefield of human paradoxes requires a good bit of courage and perhaps a hint of giving up something of the context within which we've been trained as musicians, like Twyla Tharp said. Yet that process, I think, is, is liberating, that process of yielding a bit to your own self-importance, maybe a lot. There's an interesting book by Mitchell Singer called The Untethered Soul. Mitchell Singer begins chapter two with this shocker, something particularly radical for us in the performing arts, because the musician knows he or she has to have an ego to survive, wants an audience to buy their tickets, is someone who seems to be, frankly, self-absorbed. It's the nature of the beast. But Singer opens chapter two with this, quote, your inner growth is completely dependent upon the realization that the only way to find peace and contentment is to stop thinking about yourself. Now, I should disclose that it was my wife, Marcia, who gave me this book. <laughs> Another aspect this area, era is demanding is a cutting-edge imagination. It's widely acknowledged that we're moving rapidly into a creative explosion, and the creative imagination in all of its guises will be paramount. But the groundbreaking creative work will more than likely be done in groups and will be quite improvisational in nature, and this will require of the musician an improvisational spirit. This is somewhat counterintuitive as well when you think about it, since except for jazz, most of us never really learned to improvise. But now for our music to survive, we'll have to improvise and improvise artistically, not just with musicians. This is, I believe, where the Eastman musician and scholar will in fact excel because it's not just the intense music and scholarship, it's the exposure, the deep exposure to the arts and ideas that will fuel your creativity. True, to navigate this world will entail a lot of risk, but the best creative work occurs when the best artistic minds risk being wrong, and wrong a lot of the time. The writer Joseph Clinton Pierce put it this way, to live a creative life we must lose our fear of being wrong. In closing, I think making great music is not just a matter of great technique, of insightful rhythm, of emotional or intellectual insight, and comprehension and musical communication, but of expressing all that music through the conduit of the true, unauthentic person, yourself. Those in the audience that listen to your music are, yes, looking for the poet in the human, but just as frequently, maybe even more, they're looking for the human in the poet. Graduates, I have every confidence that you'll retain your individual musical identities as you compose some amazing musical collaborations. I now also know that your core strength is your creative musical heat. 
You are, after all, the hottest school for music in America. Thank you.